recording. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number eight of the Winston Boys podcast, giving you philosophical debates to help you become happier, wealthier, and wiser. Uh, my name is Kosh. And my name is Alex. And today we have for you, well, we're going to talk about panpsychism, which is this really crazy idea that Kush has not heard anything about yet. Um, I actually kind of, one of my philosoph- uh, philosophy classes took like a lot of time last semester to talk about it. And it was a really crazy idea. And I, it's really cool in some ways, but I just want to see your reaction because it's honestly just loopy. Um, and of course, the reactions of our viewers. Um, and then we've got, so, uh, well, I think the next point is yours. Yeah. The, uh, oh, yeah. The, Alex, Alex has a, a segment prepared for me to just kind of dive into the, the deep end of, of philosophy where uh, we're talking about the, you know, how, how far does how far does science take us? Right. So, yeah, and we're going to see what Kush, right. you sure did. You did awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to see what could, how, how far Kush thinks science takes us. And then um, I'm going to respond and kind of argue the other side um, just to be a jerk. And then I'm going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about um, what, what does it mean? At what, at what point should our lives end, right? Everyone has to die at some point. And um, I think that it's more relevant than ever with advances in medical technologies, right? And the ability to prolong life long past any pleasure, right? I mean, there are people who are alive for comas and years with no hope of recovery just because they can be kept alive. And, um, you know, we, Kushar and I both kind of wanted to chat about, you know, what, is, what do we both think? You know, there's no right answer to this, but what, at what point do we kind of think, you know, well, at this point, when I get to this point, this is when I think my life should end. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, I think that'll be an interesting, of course, the philosophy behind, you know, our, our viewpoints. Um, so anyway, all right. Um, so you want to start off with, uh, well, pick a topic, Kush, you, you pick a topic. Let's, uh, let's just go in order. Let's start with the, we'll the just go in order. Kushagra is a man yeah. of plan. All right. So panpsychism, um, so basically, um, in panpsychism, it's kind of this wacky idea. So let's imagine that Kushaga, let's imagine you're a philosopher sitting in the universe. Of course, you know, you're a, you're a homegrown philosopher anyway. So of course, sitting there thinking about the depths of reality and you start to think, well, look, there's this table here made of atoms and quarks and wood and, uh, sawdust and whatever else is in this crappy table. Okay. Mine's crappy. Maybe yours is hardwood I don't know um but my crappy table right clearly it's not alive it's just sitting there if I knock on it it doesn't yell out um it's 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 dead right and then there's me right and I'm kind of made of the same kind of elements and the same stuff a little bit more water you know a little bit more of this a little bit less of that but the same basic stuff as that table but I'm alive right if you knock on me ow that hurts right if I I I react to things I have feelings I have emotions I have intentions right I have a bunch of different things um And there's a very clear line that is very obvious to even the smallest child, right? Between living and dead things. If you have a a two-year-old, a two-year-old can tell that a stick is not alive and a puppy is alive, right? Mm. Um, It's just there. And we can't like explain it though, right? Because what a puppy is just made of the same stuff as this table is, right? But the table's not alive. Um, So panpsychism is the idea. And of course, the, the real trouble here is of course, not that living things exist, but rather that there's a line and it's super hard to explain why that line is there, if that makes sense. So like, what is it about our minds that gives us a mind, right? This conglomeration of atoms that makes it an actual mind um, as opposed to just something there. Um, And uh, so panpsychism, now, of course, there are people who would say, well, there's no difference. And there are people who are saying, well, there is a difference, but I can't explain why. And then there are people who say, well, there's a difference and it's because because God has given us a mind or something, okay? Panpsychism kind of does none of those things. Panpsychism's like, okay, actually, everything has a mind. Every single atom has a mind. Every particle has a mind. Mm-hmm. And the arrangement of those particles determines whether or not those bits of a mind kind of jive together, <laughs> for lack of a better word, to create a greater mind. So, for instance, in the table, every atom has its own mind. And it's kind of following its own little wishes. Okay. And doing what it wants to do. It's very simple, of course. And, but they're all disorganized and they don't form a greater consciousness. Whereas in me, um, all those atoms, the theory says would, um, kind of jive together in some way that isn't really explained. And they're, they're specifically oriented in such a way that it gives me a mind and the ability to reason to think, right. Um, that's greater. There's consciousness sort of joined together. Now the goal is like, you go from saying, okay, we have, 
um, a bunch of unlike parts that create, or a bunch of parts that create something that's totally different, right? On a, and, and has like a, a mind, or these don't. And instead go to, well, we have a bunch of subcomponents of minds, uh, subcomponent minds that join together to create a greater mind. So the idea is you kind of move it from like different universes here where like one thing is, has mind and one thing doesn't, and you know, one thing doesn't, it's made of things that don't have mind to something has mind and it's made of things that have mind. Um, so what do you think? So is this, is this that theory that like, like, is this that theory about consciousness where yes. it's like, yes. Okay. Cause I, I feel like, I feel like I've heard of this one where it's basically like people are trying to figure out, okay, like what, like at what point does con- consciousness emerge or what we call consciousness emerge. And then it's like, well, what if like there's a tiny bit of consciousness in everything? Exactly. When there's enough of it, we notice it. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's interesting. I actually, so I was like, I was reading the other day about, um, or not reading. I'm not, I'm not that smart. I was watching uh, probably like a TikTok or some stupid shit about how <laughs> like, there's like some recent studies where like plants know when like, like there's like some, something about like plants that changes when they're like being cut down like as they're being cut down or something like that, like they can sense, like, I don't know. I don't know. Does that sound rational to you? Or does that sound like some hippie? I have, hippie crap? I have absolutely no idea, um, but please continue. I'm, I'm interested whether it's hippie crap or not. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't know any of the science of it. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't, I was just, they just I was become just like sad boy there. plants. They're like, Oh, we're getting cut down. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of chemical stuff going on there. Um, so what do you specifically think of the idea that like atoms have consciousness, right? Do you yeah, think that's it's, bonkers it, or do you think that's reasonable? I, I don't know. So, so I, I would say like the theory itself makes sense to me because like when you look at, at different like creatures, like the, the idea that like different organisms have different levels of consciousness because like of the number of a certain kinds of atoms or whatever, like it kind of makes sense. Like, like, cause, cause you, the thing is, you know, like a dog is conscious, but like, they're not as intelligent as a human. So it's kind of like, what well, does that mean that they're less conscious? I don't know if I'm, what I'm, if what I'm saying is making sense, but the theory itself, like the result it's proposing would happen. That I think makes sense. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Um, and there are actually a lot of advantages to the panpsychist view. Like, but like, like I said, um, excuse me. Like I said, it's a lot easier to say, okay, well, I have this big thing made of Legos, um, and the components are Legos, right? Whereas I have this big thing made of Legos, and the components are marbles, right? Like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, like you you can't do that, right? And that's what we're kind of saying. Because this is this is what we're kind of saying. We're like, okay, well, atoms create, um you know, this conscious being like, how, how does that happen? I don't know. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Um, Is it okay. Wait. So, so I have another, I have another question about this. Go for it. So in panpsychism, because again, I feel like I've probably just heard this on TikTok somewhere. Like, I, I don't think I've read about this at all. So does panpsychism say that there's only certain kinds of atoms or subatomic particles or whatever that carry consciousness? Or does it say that whatever the most like fundamental thing is in the universe that has a bit of consciousness attached to it? And it just cascades up. Well, I am no pain psychist, but my understanding is that it's everything. They don't think there's like a, a, a consciousness photon or something bouncing around. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's like every single, everything, the very fabric of the cosmos itself has some sort of consciousness imbued into it. Even if it's some form of consciousness that's unimaginable to ourselves. Right. I'm not saying electrons sit there and think about which way to go. Okay. Left or right. Yeah, of course not. Right. But, they're making a decision in some way or something, or they have a mind and so, you know, and that's one of the things I don't get it. Like, that's probably my biggest objection to the theory is, I'm sorry, what do you mean? An electron has a mind. What do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What do you think? How can, well, I mean, um, y- you know, we're always in chemistry class and they're always saying like, Hey, like this, like uh, this electron is attracted to this kind of atom. And like, it decides it likes this one or doesn't. So <laughs> Who knows? Maybe, 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 maybe our teachers were, were being literal about that. Yeah. They're just, <laughs> damn proton. You're looking fine. <laughs> yeah. Goes over there. And yeah, that's uh yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's what's going on. I, I can't, I can't confirm or deny. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> I have I have a bit to to add to this, and I know yeah. we're still like four minutes out from our next segment, so maybe we can carry this over. Then you you let me know what you think. Go for it. But I I was I heard some guy I don't know who he who he was. I saw him on a YouTube video though, where he he was talking. Actually, we we can talk about the maybe the actual like science or chemistry of this. He was talking about how like what science is pointing to today is that like at the most fundamental level, everything is energy. And we're not really sure what that energy is. Is that true? Is that how it works? Or is uh, that just totally out of left field? Well, you're not wrong. I mean, everything is energy in some sense. Um, for instance, any sort of particle can be converted to or created out of energy. Um, if I take an atom and slam it into your face really, really hard, sorry. Um, yeah. It's just had to, you know, it just deserved a really quick alpha particle. Um, it, it like light speed. Okay. It'll create a bunch of new particles that'll like out of the energy of the collision, right? All the kinetic energy of that atom. Well, when the two atoms collide, right? Like it'll make a bazillion different little things. Okay. Um, a, a, a bunch of muons and gluons and all sorts of junk. Okay. Um, and photons, of course. Um, but at the same time, right. I mean, matter is definitely, I don't want to say different. It's like ordered energy. It's, it's hard to, Think of it like all plastic is made of oil, but if you put plastic in your car, it's not going to run, right? Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, the, all plastic is basically made of gasoline, right? But like plastic is like solid and has different properties and those properties are very definite and it's really hard to get away from them, right? Like, I mean, I can't just take a proton and convert it into energy. That wouldn't work at all. Um, like it, you can you can even, so let's take a nuclear bomb, which produces like, I think like a one or 2% or something of its mass gets turned into energy, right? And you can take a, a few ounces or a few pounds of nuclear material. And if you fuse it properly, right? Hydrogen, okay. A few pounds of hydrogen, if you fuse it properly, you can level most of a city, right? It's crazy. And that's just a few percent. Energy, it matters very energetic, right? I mean, if I blew up this cup, it would level Winston-Salem. If I turned it all, if I released all the energy stored in this cup, it would level Winston-Salem. You'd probably hear the shock wave and like your eardrums would be bleeding all the way over there. Okay. Uh, literally like it's so much energy it's equals MC squared. So you take the mass of this in kilograms and then you multiply it by um, C squared, which is like three times 10 to the ninth or 10 to the eighth. I can't remember um, three times 10 to the ninth, 10 to the eighth, whatever meters a second. Right. So it's like nine times 10 to the 18th. Right. Um, joules per kilogram or whatever. It's an insane amount of energy. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's stuck. Like you're not going to get it out like that. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not going anywhere. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and that, that makes a lot of sense. It, and I guess like another place where I was going with that is like, maybe do you think that whole idea of like consciousness being attached in like small like quantities to like the, these like different subatomic particles and stuff, do you think that it has to do something with the fact that like, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I was kind of going with that angle that like, if these things are fundamentally energy, is that energy somehow being translated into consciousness? I don't know. Um, like I, like I don't, I don't pretend to have any answers about consciousness. I would say that things like um, fundamental energy and being translated into consciousness are like, um, pop sci buzzwords it's kind of like you know on star trek when they like start talking about like i don't know if you've watched i've watched way too much star trek um where it's like they start talking about like uh you know the flux capacitor and the the warp drive and this and that and they string together a bunch of words right and that's somewhat like a lot of these youtube scientists and stuff right no no offense to your guy i don't know maybe he's really great uh, and i just don't know but a lot of these people will say things like fundamental energy translated into consciousness and it sounds really cool right but like um fundamental energy i mean everything's made out yes everything this phone has energy um but like it's a phone there's no <laughs> i'm yeah. not gonna change it from a phone you know what i mean like unless yeah. i hurdle it at the wall at light speed it doesn't care does that make sense Oh yeah. And, and I was also like grasping for, like, I oh, was like, I no, heard no, no, this no. thing here and I'm hearing this thing now. And like, is there a connection? I, don't I, know. I think it's, I, I'm sure the guy was saying cool stuff. And I mean, no, I offense yeah. uh, to him. That's, or, or that's the right else. way to say it. He was saying cool yeah. stuff. 
But like oftentimes when they say that, if you ever hear someone saying something that sounds really cool, like translating fundamental energy into consciousness or like, you know, the vibrations of strings, the, the problem with string theory to me is it has, it predicts like seven extra dimensions or something. And I'm like, no, 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 I can see all the dimensions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you better show me a real good proof before you say there's like hidden dimensions or whatever. Anyway, I know we're supposed to move on. Um, yeah. yeah point is like, minutes. yeah, science is, is science. Something I've learned is science very rarely works out the way you want it to. And it really doesn't give a, a crap about what, um, would be convenient for your worldview. Like quantum physics is like the least intuitive thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. And anyone who claims otherwise is, doesn't understand quantum physics. If you ever hear someone like on YouTube, like, Oh, let me explain quantum physics to you. It's really simple. It makes sense. It doesn't, it yeah. doesn't make sense on a fundamental level. It just doesn't make sense. Um, which, uh, which leads us to the next discussion. Yes. So oh. let's see what you think of all this crazy science. All right. So new discussion. All right. So can reality be scientifically explained? Okay, so I, I have two perspectives on this because I had a perspective in high school and, and now I feel like I've shifted away from it. So I, I guess formerly I would have answered this question yes because I would have said like if you could identify what the most fundamental thing in the universe is like at the basis of like, like what everything is made of fundamentally Right. right. Which I don't, I don't believe we found, I don't know the science behind it. I, I don't know if quarks are that or what, but I, I feel like, again, just totally YouTube, YouTube science guy here going off of like speculation. Like if you could find that most fundamental thing and understand its behavior perfectly, then you could perfectly predict the behavior of everything that's ever going to happen. And at that point, I don't know if that makes it scientific, but it makes it all predictable and it makes it all like logical and rational and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but how valid is science? So I, I guess I, I would, so one, I would say I've, I've kind of moved away from that view. Um, I think that there's, there's, there's definitely got to be like a lot of stuff at play just in the world in, in general. Um, and, and I honestly, I don't even know how to articulate that. But I'll also say, like, I feel like I, I hear people throw around the word science and they use it incorrectly because science doesn't really like, like science isn't going to like make a claim like God isn't real or something like that. Like all science is going to do is come up with a testable hypothesis, like something that can be invalidated. And then it's going to see if it can invalidate it. And if it can't, and it's tried a bunch of times and it says, okay, this is just a law because we haven't been able to invalidate it yet. And so like, how valid is science? I'd say that's a pretty valid way of thinking. I don't know what you think. I really, agree. I really liked what you were saying there. Um, I, yeah, I hear science being thrown around the wrong way all the time. Um, I remember when I went to visit um, my cousins in Greece a couple, uh, what was it, like a, a year and a half ago now. And I got into a cousin, a, 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 an argument with my eighth grade cousin um, who speaks incredible English. My God, it blew me away how good he was at speaking English. Um, but <laughs> I mean, he had like a, such a good, he had a better vocabulary than like so many people that I know. <laughs> um, anyway, besides the point. Um, and he was like, well, I don't believe in God because I don't think it makes, I think that science has proved God doesn't exist. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Like, hang on. I don't know who said that. I don't, I show me the paper. <laughs> yeah. Um, you show me the paper that was like, yeah, we looked for God and he, he won't, he wasn't there. <laughs> we, we, we yeah. invented the God, the God telescope and we looked and out. Oh, nope. Nope. Just, just the vast emptiness. Uh, like, uh, I, I, there's nothing. Um, now, uh, I'm not going to make any claims about, you know, if the science rules out, maybe for instance, the Christian God, right. Or, or, you know, certain things mentioned in the Bible. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Like, um, but it does, certainly doesn't rule out that some being created the universe for one. Um, so that's not even a scientific issue, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, I think that science and philosophy as well, right? I mean, I think you hit a wall at a certain point, right? Because you keep asking why, and eventually you get to, well, the universe was created, right? And then you ask why, and then what is science going to say? Yeah. The universe and exists, think, why? Hmm? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> And I think too, like my personal like experience and opinion is just that like, I feel like I thought about things that way, like logically when I was just kind of going through the motions of life, like 
go to school, do homework, like don't like fucking do it. like. And then it, like as I, I went to college and I kind of discovered um, like business and this whole side of things that I really love, like at that point, I started to feel like like the, I mean, there's nothing like scientific about it. But at that point, like I just somehow internally felt like I had found a purpose and it, it didn't feel like, like, it didn't feel like, oh, like, this is all some, like, logical thing. It was like, oh, like, for some reason that I don't know why, like, this fe- this feels like the answer to my why. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So yeah I, I think that there's, like, there's things at play that just can't be explained. Like, um, I, I, don't, I don't know how to articulate that. I, I, I read this book, and it was for a class. Like, I always say I read this book, and it sounds really impressive. Like, I'm just reading books. But, like, I don't just read books. <laughs> yeah. Usually. I read a few That's a good thing. Interesting. Well, I, I read it for a class. Um, it was uh, called, what was it? Galileo's error. And it was like, kind of, um, it's kind of exactly what you were saying. That's like, you know, um, yeah, there's things in, in the world that aren't explainable by logic. Right. It's like, well, I feel this way. I see red. What the heck is red? Like, uh, yeah. Right? Like how can science explain the color red? You know what I mean? Like sure, it's a it's a it's a photon, it's a wavelength, but can ex- it explain what you see when you see red? You know what I mean? Like yeah. like show me the formula. See what I'm saying? This is you're you're bringing you're bringing back my like my fifth grade daydreams from like when I was. There. <laughs> I was this is so why he, I'm a philosophy major because it's like fifth grade daydreams. Yeah, no, he, except people the take him seriously. Yeah, but what if? Okay, what if I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. This is this is not a, a very official philosophical thing, but I'm Go just gonna it. throw it out there. It's probably like, more what official if, than you think. Yeah. Well, I'm this is random hypothetical, Go haven't ahead. heard it anywhere, making it up right now. Go like for it. example, right? Like what if there were like some aliens, right, who would come to Earth, except they're so advanced that they've discovered a color that like our eyes can't detect. You or mean like bees? a color because bees see a lot of colors we don't see. <laughs> I, I don't i don't know but like some something and they've made like some kind of cloak that is that or something that allows like light to pass through so, something that like yeah, yeah messes yeah. with like the way that we like interact with our world like what's stopping those those guys from just coming here and walking around with their cloaks and like we just never notice you know I what mean, i mean i've two things there two things there. for one if there are aliens oh, out there if there are aliens out there yeah they are if, if aliens come to earth they're going to be so ridiculously like overpowered compared to us. <laughs> like, okay, here's the thing. If you have two civilizations that are around for a million years each. Okay. Mm. And the one ours is 10,000 years old. And the other one's just somewhere in that million years. It's probably not going to be like on the same levels we are. Right. They're probably going to be like super freaking advanced. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's absolutely, I mean, if aliens came and wanted to spy on us, I'm sure they could, we would have no idea. Like, they could probably destroy us very easily about as easily as we could destroy like some spearmen or something. Okay. Like if like the USA fought like the Spartans, right. It doesn't matter how good of warriors the Spartans are when you nuke their whole country. Right. Um, so like, I think it's kind of a, the same sort of thing going on here with, um, you know, yeah, absolutely. Aliens could be walking around. I can't, I don't think they are, um, but it, yeah. it's absolutely possible. Um, you never and know, let me just, uh... colors you don't see. Yeah, hey, alien people. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't work. You, sorry. You keep going. Um, so, I mean, you know, like, um, I think the thing is you would notice something, right? I mean, I, look, mm-hmm. scientists can pick up gravitational waves from black hole mergers billions of light years away. Um, they would have noticed aliens walking around. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just saying. I, I, like I guess I, more more so where I was going with that before I took it way off, uh, way out somewhere where I thought it was going to be entertaining. Was that like, what if there's things around us that are there, but we can't detect? Like not even like living beings, but just stuff that like, like the hardware that we have can't detect. Well, you know, there's dark it's, matter and dark energy and combined they make, if you converted everything into energy, like you were talking about earlier, if you just look at the universe as like, a crap ton of energy that's just in various states like matter and photons mm-hmm. and whatever different particles okay um gravity etc cetera, etc cetera. um the vast majority of it is in stuff we can't detect it's mostly in dark matter which is like 30 percent, and then dark energy which is like 60 something percent and then like one percent of the universe is like stuff we can see 
Um, oh, really? I, by energy. Yeah. It's like, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, like people talk about like the, you know, the coming of, you know, the era of science and the unified theory and we'll be able to predict everything. I'm like, look, if in my lifetime we can look at dark energy, I'll be happy. <laughs> but right so, now we're so, literally missing like 95% of the picture here. Yeah. So, so I know we only have like 40, 30 seconds left in this or something. Oh, no. But Quick. just in the in the last little bit, I want to. So, so dark matter is is like a, a actual physical thing. Yes, it's like you could touch there. it. I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, I haven't tried. It's probably around us at least some small amount. Um, but, yeah, but it's so, matter I mean, like like air or something. Right. right? So well, it's not like air. It, you can't see it. You can't. It doesn't emit any radiation. It's like you look at a galaxy and you're like, hmm, that galaxy should have flown apart, but it's not. It's orbiting really tightly. There's clearly something there that has mass that's causing gravity. And mm -hmm. then, then you're like, okay, well, we're, we don't know what it's going to be called or what it is. So we're just going to call it dark matter, right? Uh, physicists oh. have this lovely thing of like, they, they discover all this stuff that they don't know anything about and they just call it something. And it just kind of sits there and like, they don't really like, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, you can't look at the stuff. You can't tell anything about it. So, you know, mm -hmm. like the same thing with dark energy, like the universe is expanding faster and faster. Why? I don't know. Physicists don't know either. So they were just like, okay, well, there's something pushing it apart. We're just going to call it dark energy because dark is mysterious and energy because it's like pushing and makes sense. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's, I was, I was just wondering, like, I, that's actually, I, I didn't even know that, but yeah, yeah, no, um, there's so much about the universe. We don't know. And yeah, absolutely. Um, sometimes I, I, when I talk to, um, people who like claim, that science knows more, right? Or people who are like, oh yeah, well, you know, like religion's just superstition or, you know, like um, it just various different viewpoints about like, oh, well, your science, your consciousness is like only deterministic or whatever, right? And I'm like, that might be true, but you certainly can't prove it scientifically. Yeah. Um, and, and you're just hypothesizing about where science is going to go. And if there's anything that we've learned from the history of science is that science never goes where we think it's going to go. Science does yeah. not care about what humanity's expectations. Like if you're doing science, right. It won't meet your expectations at all. Right. Yeah. What so, was so I guess Einstein the, was like, yeah, like Einstein was like, God doesn't play dice. And guess what? Apparently God does because quantum yeah. physics is crazy. Okay. So I, yeah, I, I guess to, to answer the question too, on, on my part, I, I do think science is, is valid. Like the actual study of like the actual science science is valid i love scientific science. method i don't know as of right now i would say that the jury is out on whether or not science can answer everything how about that i don't think science will ever answer what red looks like you know what i mean i think that's something that only the human brain can answer i don't know right? yeah how does how does how does the summer sun feel right like there's no formula for that and those things are very real um yeah. okay when yeah i know we're over uh so Let's uh, let's move on to a more pleasant topic. When do you want to die? <laughs> yeah, really pleasant. <laughs> Not morbid at all. Yeah. Oh, are you are you actually asking? Yeah, that's that's the topic. Ooh. When when I feel like I want to. Ah. Well, I don't that's, think it, that's okay. my answer. So let me refine the question a little bit because maybe that, was that, was such a, that was such a weird answer. That was that was like a. That was like a TikTok. That was like right me there. trying to be, that was like me trying to be like a grandpa and then absolutely just like bombing at it. So what I'm really asking is, right. I don't think anyone ever comes to a point in their life where they're like, at least this is what, right. Um, my parents and my grandfather's told me, it doesn't matter how old you are. Right. And my grandfather's what, 88. Right? I don't think he's like, Oh, well, I'm old enough now. I want to die. Right. Like, no, that's not what anyone wants to do. Right. Um, I think that you live your life and you feel like yourself until the day you stop living. Right. And you probably want to continue living most for most people. Right. Um, as long as your life is pleasant and whatnot, but like at a certain point, right. Um, you're going to die. Right. Like that's certain, right. We're, we're both, we're both goners. <laughs> life is an STD with a hundred percent mortality rate. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, there's a 0% surf survival rate. So it's just, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. And so the interesting thing with that, right, is I think oftentimes, and I, I, I read a lot about this, um, let's say that a lot of people these days that we have, you know, incredible medical technology that we should all be very grateful for. And we end up with stuff like, um, but we end up with stuff like chronic diseases that are incurable. 
and that have sapped all the joy from someone's life. And that person has no way out, say suicide, which would of course be traumatic for them. For a lot of people, I know in Christianity, you're not supposed to kill yourself and I'm a Christian. Um, uh, and, and a lot of religious doctrines don't believe in that suicide is acceptable. A lot of cultures frown upon suicide. Um, so it seems like there should be somewhere in between, you know what I mean? Between just like, you know, and like, you know, lingering on for months on a ventilator or whatever, the end stage of some disease that you end up with at 80 or 108, let's say, just to put it a little bit further, 108, right? Let's say I get a chronic disease at 108. Well, at what point in that chronic disease do I say, okay, that's enough. Um, so I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. This is, this is a tough question. And, and I kind of agree with what you were saying at the beginning. Um, I, I don't think that anyone would like have an actual answer to this because I, I think kind of going back to episode six, like, you know, if there was a neural net, like, I think, you know, almost all of us would say, yeah, I want to, I want to be uploaded to that. And just actually you changed forever. my mind about that because I was going into it. Like, I'm going to argue with that. And then and I was like, yeah. actually, wow, that sounds really swell. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's tough. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I honestly, when it comes to the bioethical part of that, because I, I know that was something that we were talking about. Yeah. I actually, I don't think that the solution there is that like people should only live up to a certain age. Like, of course not. No, I, I feel like there, like, even if we had to do that, like there's other ways that we can like control population and resources and I absolutely like that. agree that no way, I mean, under no circumstances would I say that the limiting factor should be age because age is a very different thing for different people. Um, yeah. You can be a very healthy 95 year old and a very sickly, very miserable 55 year old with no hope of recovery. Um, mm-hmm. Right. And age would just be a, a, a very arbitrary way. Um, yeah. So I guess I can answer my own question since yeah. I guess I've probably put a lot more thought. In it. Like I said, I've had glasses on all this junk. Um, and, and so I've had to, you know, I've sat around and thought about it. Um, so a few things. Um, for one, Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff like that absolutely terrifies me. Um, I don't know about other people, but like, that's like my greatest fear is like, I get to a point in my life where like, I don't remember like my wife's name or something. And like, like, I don't want to get to that point. You know what I mean? Um, I don't want to, so that's like, that's like the number one thing for me, I guess, is I don't want to get to a point for me personally, I'm not saying this for anyone else. I'm just answering my own question. Um, hypothetically speaking, I don't ever want to get to a point where I've lost my sense of self. And that's the mm-hmm. biggest thing for me. Um, that's the biggest criteria is like, I don't ever want to, if I'm not Alexander Marshall anymore, as in, I'm not like, I wouldn't recognize myself in any way. Right. Like in the future or in the past. Right. I mean, if I was like an old a guy with like no memory or something. I looked at the photo of my past self and I was like, who's that? Right. Or like, you know, or if like I had to try, if I could have a conversation with myself and not realize it, like that's a no go for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, that's one. Uh, and also I personally wouldn't want to, I guess, um, linger on without a great deal of like, if I'm not in, if I'm not having a good quality of life, I wouldn't want to, live and for instance let's say i was in the hospital for a long period of time and ended up putting my family deep into debt or something i wouldn't want to be incredibly burdensome in other words um i wouldn't want to like meaningfully lower the standard of living for my family by existing yeah. um and well, then actually yeah oh sorry ahead. sorry go, go ahead and finish i don't um worry. yeah and then uh, of course the biggest thing and all of these are contingent on this there's no possibility or no like reasonable probability for recovery right like uh if it's like a you know i knock my head real good and i'll probably be okay again in a year like that's a different situation than if i have a degenerative neurological disease that will never be undoable right yeah so what do you think uh so i, I was just gonna say, sorry i i know it's the wrong thing to do but you mentioned like one thing and my mind just went no like of i was, course. I, was, I, was, I, was like, yeah. I was listening to like everything you were saying and then you said it and i was like oh this reminds me of a story yeah. but anyway now that now that we're here. Um, so I remember I, I heard this story on, on YouTube about this guy who was like, he was in a vegetative state for like 15 years and his parents, like they kept them on life support. Like they, they kept believing he would come back. Like he would be able to, you know, like, like get out of this thing. And he eventually did. And he, he like, I, like, I'm pretty sure you can Google his story. I hope this wasn't just a story that I heard on YouTube. I hope this was like a real thing, 
but it was like this guy who like he was trapped in this vegetative state and like he talked about how like it felt like he was trapped in his own body like he 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 literally like like that's what he felt like for 15 years and it's like a story about how like when he was in that vegetative state like he said even though his parents like hired all these people to like take care of him and stuff like none of them looked at him as like a human and he said like like tons and tons of these people who were supposed to be taking care of him had like abused him and all this stuff like over the course of 15 years just like you know i think i read about this guy no i think i did it was like a, he was like a little hmm. kid or something right yeah like, like a, a little kid to to like in his 30s yeah and then like and his mom was like i remember reading about it, like the his said his low point was like when he was a teenager and his mom was like gee i wish he'd just die yeah it was yeah. like she thought he didn't have any like mental fun- function and later on they realized he had mental function but yeah. like yeah he kind of like woke up slowly and was like actually conscious and stuff and like yeah it's I, that's a really wild story and yeah i mean um yeah <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I, I've said that, that was a wild story. Yeah. And I, um, yeah, I don't even know how to respond to that or incorporate it in. There's always room for mistakes. And of course, with this sort of thing, all right. Um, I guess you'd have to put it into a statement or something. It's like, if I'm in a coma for more than six months, you know, and there's no reasonable hope of recovery to let me go, but what if I'm really awake and they just don't know it. Right. Well, I guess I have to weigh that out when I'm writing my, you know, to-do list. If I end up in a traumatic coma, I don't know now that I'm doing that anytime soon, but you know, yeah um, ethically bioethic for the sake of discussion right um i would yeah i don't know i don't know that's a really interesting question um, yeah usually for things like that what they do um before they pronounce your brain dead or anything is they do different neurological tests and like see if your pupils respond or anything so um hmm. and i'm sure that guy's pupils were responding and all the basic stuff was working because there's like different parts of your brain, you know, and like the really basic parts of your brain, like they kind of keep going almost no matter what, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So like, if you're like brainstem isn't working, like the rest of it ain't working either. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Usually. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, I guess I, I was, that, that, that makes sense that like, that's just something you have to weigh out, but I was going to throw that in there too, is like maybe something like when you, when you're thinking about the, like, when you're thinking about like duty to die in that sense with bioethics, like in terms of like the, you know, people in vegetative states, like that might just be something to consider. Is like you don't, you might not know like whether, I mean, whether you're going to absolutely or not. And I would say this: I mean, under no circumstances, for one, should people be making decisions for those who are ill, right? So, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, unless the operation is clearly not in their, um, in their best interest. So for instance, um, and let's just go for uh, one minute over, um, <laughs> cause I know we're almost out of time, but, uh, for instance, like I remember, um, when my grandmother passed away, um, uh, she wasn't going to recover and she had already said, I don't want to be on life support. I don't want to be on life support. So my grandfather made the decision to take her off life support because that's what she said she wanted. And there wasn't any real chance for recovery. She was going to die and it was just going Mm -hmm. to drag it out and do something that she had said already. I don't want this. Right. That's a different situation than if my grandfather was like, well, okay, I'm just going to pull the, you know what I mean? Like one is like Mm -hmm. fulfilling someone who is clearly incapacitated by nature of the disease, right. Fulfilling their wishes. And you know, according to the best medical practice and making them comfortable and everything else. And the other one is like, you know, uh, kind of murderish, right? Like, I don't yeah. know, like you're really, you're really walking a fine line there when you start assigning people's wishes to them while they're in an unconscious state, right? Especially if results in their death. How do I decide if, you know, if someone gets to live or die, if I haven't talked to them first and they didn't have a, a preference, you know what I mean? Under a certain circumstance. So I don't know. Maybe I really want to hang out in a coma for 30 years if I'm in a permanent coma, you know? Like, who knows, right? What right do you have to tell me? Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, I think it's a very interesting um, topic and something a lot of people, I did, I certainly didn't think about it for most of my life. And then I was like, oh, this is actually really interesting. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree with you. I, I think it's, it's an interesting topic. I, I really, yeah, I, I don't. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, in, in the, in the closing seconds of this, pick a, uh, pick a side just to, to, to have an answer to the question. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I actually, I, I don't, I don't know about this one. I, I would err on the side of no, like you, you don't have a, a duty to die. I, I agree. Um, I, like I said, I think if any sort of, I, I think, I, I, the paper on duty to die was said a lot of things I didn't really agree with, um, but I just put it in there because it's kind of a cool phrase. I don't know, it sounds kind of cool. Um, mm-hmm. it sounds very dramatic too. Um, yeah, but like, um. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree with you. And I think that erring on the side of caution is always, and, and of course, it's definitely a, a personal choice, right? Um, and, and a, you know, it, it can't be like someone saying, well, you have duty to God. So, you know, like, no, right? That would yeah. be, that would inevitably lead to egregious abuses. So, anyway, all right, well, yeah. we're over. So, yeah, we, we are at 40 minutes. I don't know what, what this was, but we're at 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Um, so, you want to, you want to hit them with the, the yeah outcomes? so well everyone thank you for listening in um today we had a really good time we talked about hints like is what if everything's really conscious uh talked about what, what is all this science stuff anyway you know so it's the physics major <laughs> yeah um you know but I, I think it's a very serious question you know how how much of reality can be explained by science and i think we had a you know of course we didn't come to any answers you're really doing philosophy <laughs> just to yeah. get the bad of it um uh, but I think we had a good discussion and that's what matters. <laughs> um, and of course, duty to die, right? Which is, was a very pleasant topic. And it was actually surprisingly kind of fun conversation <laughs> yeah. considering how dark the topic was. But yeah, I mean, I think we kind of agreed that, yeah, um, if you don't have a, you certainly don't have a hard set duty to die. And if you have any leanings towards it, I guess that's a, you know, it's a personal choice as to what circumstances you choose to live in. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'll also I'll, I'll 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 jump in here. So uh, if you if you enjoyed today's video, please uh, please make sure to grab your panpsychism textbook and smash that like button. Um, and uh, if you want to stay up to date on Winston Boy's um, content, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way, every time we post a new episode, you'll get a notification. And it'll take you straight to the video. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that that's all on our end. Um, I'll see you guys next week. I don't know if Alex See you next had... week. Farewell. Yep. yep. Bye-bye.